What's up everyone, welcome to Bloodborne, I'm Obix and today we are continuing the old Hunter's DLC. On the last episode we explored the Hunter's Nightmare and defeated Ludwig after a really long time. Today we are pushing forwards and we're gonna explore the research hall and hopefully kill the failures and Lady Maria today. I don't know if I'll face Lawrence as well, that's wishing for too much, but we'll see. I might also not finish the episode all today, I'm ready for that, if it comes to such but let's see let's see how, how our luck plays today and also i apologize that in the last episode i had a lot of uh background mic noise the mic kept rubbing against my sweater and kept doing a lot of noise i corrected it hopefully it won't happen in this episode forward and i also noticed while editing the the fight against ludwig that i didn't have the music volume at max and Ludwig's theme is amazing and it really sucked that I couldn't hear it that well. It was not just on the recording, me playing, I couldn't hear it as well. And I did notice it, but I was so focused on the fight that I only fully realized it later. But yeah, now everything is max, the mic is proper, hopefully this recording goes well. A tragic figure, but he will shame himself no longer. He died with his ideals untarnished. Untarnished? True hero. Elden Ring, hello. Much at least. I know that you're called Tarnished there. Do you know why the hunters are drawn to this nightmare? Because it sprouted from their very misdeeds. Things that some would rather keep secret. A pitiful tale of petty arrogance, really. High time someone exposed the whole charade. He's talking about cause, right? Now, now. Go on ahead. You seek nightmares and the secrets within, do you not? Before I forget, I also tweaked my runes. On the last episode, while I faced Ludwig, I had the runes to increase physical damage and all damage. And then I switched to Arcane. Now I have the physical and all damage reduction and the guidance rune. I think it's really handy because you can tell, for example, if you look at my fight against Ludwig, Rally is a big part of my fighting style. I have very little health, so every time I'm hit, I immediately try to attack to recover it. It's risky, but now with the Guidance Rune, it's super, super helpful. Be sure curse the Wasn't there supposed to be a guy in one of these jail cells? I thought there was. And I don't mean this NPC, I mean like in those ones, I thought there was an open one with a guy inside. Oh, there's more. Ah, oh, there we go. No. <laughs> I don't know if it was this. I think there's supposed to be an enemy in one of those. Okay, it was that guy. Confuse it. Let's head on to the elevator. Why are there three bodies here? I'm at a level of playing this game that I'm actually starting to question things that I didn't question before. And I'm trying to think if there's any meaning why there's three 
tombstones, basically. Two camps, two... Graves, that's what I meant. Two graves here. Three, actually. <laughs> Jesus. Great one's wisdom. Oh, that's interesting. I was trying to dodge. Okay, but next next try I'll kill them for sure. Shit! Come on. Shit, son of a bitch, dude. One shot.
finally. Let's activate the lift, shall we? Eyes on the inside. It's such a, a fun touch, this lift. The fact that you have to insert an eye inside a skull to turn it on. And also, I don't know about you guys, but I didn't notice the wolf under the table every single time that I used the lift. I just noticed it when I saw it on a video online. I never noticed that small detail. It's like a small tribute to the way we wake up. Alright. <clears throat> I totally forgot this was a, a replica of the altar at the Cathedral Ward. Is this a replica of the Cathedral Ward? I'm not sure. All right, perfect. We got Lawrence's skull, we got the church cannon. Now, if I wanted, I could already face Lawrence, actually. Do I want to face Lawrence already? Is the question. Hmm. Oh, you gain insight from entering this place. Oh, that's wild. I really like those small touches. Finding this place makes you mad. Oh, wow. Um, I was checking the guide, and the guide tells me to face Lawrence in the end of the DLC. Which is weird. It tells me to face failures, Lady Maria, cause, and then go back to the underground pile and to the Cathedral Ward to face Ludwig or Hunter's Nightmare. To face uh, Lawrence, sorry. Um, but I don't think I'm gonna do it. I think I'll face him earlier. I'll explore the research hall calmly because I want to chill and explore some place first. And then I think I'll do failures, Lady Maria, and backtrack to face Lawrence. I, I want Cause to be the last boss, okay? I, I It's weird for me to face Cause and then go back to face another boss. But yeah, I don't want to face him right away. I want to chill a bit, explore this area, and then we'll go back and face Lawrence. What is this guy looking for? For his eyes, right? Yeah. Yeah, this deals poison. Okay. I remember correctly. That door is locked. There's nothing else here. There's just an item there, actually. Up it is. Oh shit. Oh, you're really quick. Oh! Oh! Why are they so quick? Oh, that's savage. They are so quick, I didn't expect that. I was just thinking to myself, if... I should change to a cane or a bolt or something, and this fucker just sprints at me. Let's see. Uh, 
Okay. Ninety two. Oh, right. It makes sense that I would actually switch the weapon. 265 dealt less. Okay. Let's see here again. They don't seem to be specifically weak to any element. The damage that I'm dealing seems to be only relate to the actual numbers I have on my weapon. Exactly. They legit have no specific weakness. There's no element that affects them more. Usually even if an enemy doesn't have a specific weakness, an element will deal a bit extra damage. But it's not the case. They're just neutral, I guess. Hello? Oh shit. So many.
finally. Took a while. Shit. Wait. These are normal people with bags on their heads. They are not those blobby, mushy things yet. Why are there more guys? Are these the same? Are they coming back to life? Or are these just enemies that I didn't see before? What the hell? I knew there was a trap around these um, these shelves, but I thought I was dodging all of them.
Oh, I didn't remember there was a third one. But it was just two. Ah, oh, this is a link. Okay, perfect. Alright, I found her, which is great. Let me just start the quest. Dating Maria? No. You're someone else. Please, could you do something for me? I need brain fluid. Murky, mushy brain fluid. The way she describes it is really funny. It's like she's holding back the desperate craving for it but yeah i'll take a break and then we'll finally explore the research hall and find the brain fluid and all that Tava aqui o outro atalho mesmo ao lado. Foda-se, a sério. I totally forgot that there would be these enemies without the heads. I remembered just the heads, but I didn't remember the bodies without the heads. My god. I did not remember about this set. Oh, dude. I mean, I have to. I really have to. Do I have a choice? I don't think so. This game is so weird, dude. Why do I like this game so much? Uh... Mm-hmm. I really can have a blobby head, huh? Finally, dude, I swear. I am so tired of climbing these stairs and facing the same enemies over and over. I'm not even mad that I just died because I can finally use the elevators this way. Finally, I made it to the top. Jesus. Took so fucking long. This area is really cool. It's so well designed. The fact that it's such a small place, but it takes so long to cross. And then you, you activate the stairs and there's a whole other area to explore. There's so many more rooms to explore. It's really well designed, but it's so...
there's supposed to be a blobby head on the top of the ladder, on the top of these stairs, but I don't seem to find it. Better look around again. There we go. Right. One brain fluid. What does this say? Skull. It's so interesting that on the, the on the the main game you have the beast skull, but on the hunter's nightmare you have the human skull. It's actually interesting. What does that mean? Does it mean that he was transferred to the nightmare and he regained his humanity? Like he... Or is it a completely separate person? Because I suppose... I usually... I always thought that the... Beast skull that we find in Cathedral Ward and this skull belong to Lawrence. Like there's two versions of his skull. One where he's still human and another one where he's lost his humanity. I wonder what's the... Meaning. Oh, interesting. In the early days of the healing church, the great, the great ones were linked to the ocean. And so the cerebral patients would imbibe water and listen for the howl of the sea. Brain fluid writhed inside the head, the initial makings of the internal eyes. Okay. There's some sort of explanation as to how they obtained eyes inside the head. Okay. Still doesn't make much sense. I did not see it. Why are these guys speed running the stairs? What the hell? the fuck? Fine strike. What is this? I didn't remember that type of gem existed. Why are they so fast, dude? There's the blobby head. Oh, there's a hunter. Amazing. Amazing. Did he die? I think he died. <laughs> awesome. That was great. Alright, second brain fluid. That's what I was searching for. So we already have the path for the boss unlocked, but there's still some shit that I gotta search. Oh, shit.
Motherfucker, dude. Simon! What are you doing here, Simon? Not a pretty sight, is it? Oh, I don't know what you're talking about. face of the blood worshipping beast purging healing church. But that's not all. You seek the secrets held by the nightmare, do you not? Then here's what you must do. Climb the astral clock tower and kill Maria. She hides the real secret. I really like Simon's quest, because he's the only NPC that follows you around. I mean, not the only one, but he follows you around through the DLC and kind of gives you some guidance. I really appreciate that touch. It's nice. Oh, these fuckers have the tentacles, right? I forgot about this. With the switch in the, in the ladder, in the stairs, these fuckers show up. It's really wild to think that this was done by the healing church. They proclaimed they sell themselves as the saviors of Yarnum, saying that they found some miraculous blood that would heal everyone and so on. And then on everyone's back they do this shit. So bizarre. Alright, so this tell me, tells me that I gotta give her the fluid, reload the area, give her the second fluid. Reload the area and get the third fluid from her. So the third fluid is from herself. I remember that when I first played the game, I spent an hour or so searching the research hall back and forth to try to find the last one. And I think I had to Google it and figure out that it was actually herself that would give it. You say so. Oh, I hear the sticky sound. Do you hear it too? <laughs> oh, I know. Will you have my blood as thanks? I'll have you know. I was once a blood saint too. That makes sure, me I guess. Happy. But I cannot move. Look, on my right arm. I'm sorry to trouble you. But you don't mind, do you? <laughs> What's the the buff? Stores HP, then rejuvenates, rejuvenates HP for some time. Where's the other bloods? Did I use them? I did not get any blood from Adriana or Adela. Oh shit! Oh, don't be greedy. As they say, I should know. <laughs> Hello? Hello? Okay. Is anyone there? Maybe I was too close. Sorry, I need help. I'm trying. But I'm... I had to reload the area so that I could give her the second brain fluid, but I was reloading too close to her, I think. Or maybe I just really needed to reload three times. Yeah. Hello? Is that who I think it is? Please. Oh, please. I need brain fluid. Please bring me brain. I must have it. That's without it. I'll be sent back to my. Yes, that's it. Let me have it. Ah. Ah. 
Thank you. Thank you so much. You have saved me. Take this charm. Lady Maria gave it to me, but it is all I can offer, other than my own blood. Perfect. Please, do not abandon me. Oh, the sticky sound is clear. How extraordinary. Do you think that water drips even down deep below at the bottom of the sea? Can you hear it? <laughs> All right. Oh, yeah, so I have to reload the game three times before each interaction. Okay. This is mad. This is like Pokemon evolution, but it looks like she's the first evolution and she's actually further from me. Oh, hello. One last time. Will you fetch brain fluid just one last time? The murky, mushy fluid that will make me whole. The sticky sound whispers to me. So very close, right into my ear. My head, just a head, that's all there is. I need my baptism. Please, I bet I want to. <laughs> now I gotta kill her, because she is immortal, like the other heads. Pick the brain fluid and give it back to her. So funny. I see a shape. My guide, I see your voice. Clearly as it bends and bleeds. And you gain insight to that. Oh, I really like that. My own revelation. Just for me. <laughs> Thank you. For everything. Really. I used to be nothing. <laughs> he died. The fuck? But yeah, the, the touch that you gain insight when you enter the research hall and you gain insight after this interaction because she ascended uh, her insight so much that she was able to see a rune. She was basically touched with the knowledge of a great one again. As well. I really like the touch of gaining insight in this area. Because it's truly such a revelation to find the cursed things the healing church was doing behind our backs here. Arcane? Is this what they were trying to achieve with the Celestial Emissary? Oh, I didn't remember this. So, they did these experiments on the Hunter's Nightmare. They were able to make these people ascend humanity in a way. They were actually able to use Arcane, and someone knew about this knowledge and tried to recreate it in the real world. 
And that's why you have the Celestial Emissary. Is that it? That's very interesting. Editing this part of the episode was really interesting because it got me thinking again. I really cannot tell what's the connection between this area and the Celestial Emissary because you have the Celestial Emissary with those blue aliens but you have the same type of aliens coming from the experiments that Yusefka's imposter did in the clinic. And these guys come also from experiments from the healing church here in the research hall. So both creatures come from experiments that humans did. I don't know if the aliens also existed on their own, if they were actual real creatures that already existed without the experiments and the experiments were just recreating them, or if the aliens came all from experiments. The thing is, both creatures exist in the same place with a similar behavior with the arcane attacks, and so there's obviously a connection. Someone saw one of the two and tried to recreate it in the other place. That's why I was trying to connect the dots. This is not something that I used to do when I first played the game. I didn't connect any dots, I didn't understand anything of the game. So it's really interesting that I'm getting to the point that I'm actually trying to make sense of what I'm seeing. But yeah, I'll have to check some lore video and try to understand it better. I hope you liked my side note. Black Sky Eye. Okay. I believe that's what they are using to summon that sort of meteor. Can I also go here? And okay. oh. I missed. Come on! Alright, lock shield. Useless! The only thing that I'm missing is the underground cell key. And I have no idea of where it is. It might be the item that I saw in a body hanging from, uh, from an edge. That I could not reach yet. Maybe I can reach it now. Ah, there we go. This is the body that I was talking about. Yep, and I was right. There we have the key. Alright. So this is every item on the research hall. Oh, that's great. Okay. So I just checked and this was indeed the last item that I needed to pick up on the research hall. So... I'll take a break and then we'll face the living failures. So that's gonna be fun. I should equip the bolt gem, I think. The bolt, the uh, bolt saw cleaver. Can I do it quickly? All right. Because bolt is stronger against the kin. Okay. 
Fucking hell, dude. I couldn't dodge it. Again.
All right. It wasn't that bad. Okay. I was expecting to kill them first try. Unfortunately, it was the seventh try. But one to seven is not that big of a deal. We did it. Okay. I can at least put one boss in the cover of this episode, okay? <laughs> but yeah, we did it. Didn't take that long, 15 minutes. That's chill. All right, shall we give Lady Maria a try? I'm kind of scared, because if the living failures took me seven tries and Ludwig took me 150, I'm scared. I am pretty scared, dude. And for the record, I still have the same runes and attire as I had against living failures, all physical. So, yeah. Let's see. What's up, bitch? I'm not ready. A corpse should be left well alone. so sweetly. Only an honest death will kill you now. From your wild curiosity. All right, Maria. Let's do this. I gotta get the timing right. It's kind of tricky. I'm wasting bullets. Oh! You also shoot! I didn't remember that. Fucker. Oh! This is not a strong start. Not at all. Fucker. Bitch, you thought? <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. It didn't start well, but I did manage one parry, I dodged a lot of attacks. It's okay. It's okay. Also, I hope you enjoy seeing Nero's butt in the background. <laughs> oh boy! Oh ho ho! Fucker! Oh, I did such a good parry. Oh, come on, that's unfair. This is gonna be a headache to learn the parrying windows. Excuse me? Come on, dude. You catch me with one attack and immediately just shred me to pieces. <laughs> well, <laughs> I did the parry right. I'm actually thinking if I should equip a rune to gain bullets from visceral attacks. 
think that might be handy. I'm gonna switch some things up. I pressed to dodge, dude! I pressed to dodge! She really came for my throat in this one. I hate that attack. I think I gotta start dodging forwards after I... Like, when I do the visceral, I get close to her to attack her and deal more, deal more damage. Instead of dodging away, I should dodge towards her again. Second phase, okay. Within 24 attempts, that's nice. It's pretty much what happened with Ludwig, so I shouldn't dream too much. Shit. Shit. That went better, though. so hard to dodge that one. It went well though. We're slowly doing more damage. I'm slowly getting used to the second phase. Motherfucker. Ah, oh, that started so well. And now she's turning to... <laughs> to the second phase and I'm dead. What's the point, dude? <laughs> okay, I'm gonna try to change my strategy a bit. I'm gonna try to focus more on dodging instead of parrying or attacking. I'm gonna try to dodge every attack. When I see a window, I attack her. But the focus is to keep dodging non-stop so that I get the habit inside. So that I, I get used to dodging the attacks. Then it's easier to attack instead of just always risking it. But I can totally see me winning against her just dodging. It's actually very, very plausible. Especially on the second and third phase where she has those long range attacks. I can imagine that this is actually helpful. Instead of trying to keep a distance so that you can parry well. Yeah, because I'm... I'm already getting close to the second phase and I haven't gotten hit once. Yeah. I can so imagine this being more helpful. Oh, I didn't expect the fire to hit me there.
I was so close, dude. I was so close. Oh. Oh, but this was great. I literally said, okay, I'm gonna change my strategy. And it changed the whole game. It changed the whole game. It's so much easier to deal with her close by. I mean, if I can manage to land a parry, great. But I don't think I really need to. Oh, it hit with the AoE. Damn it. 51. I was against the wall. Come on. Shit. Okay, I can't take damage from that attack. This was more like a... I wanted to see what would happen if I was close to her when she did that. All this time I was dodging it, I never took damage. I was wondering if I did take damage or not. Damn it. Oh, come on. I got here without using a blood vial and you one shot me. All right, everyone. I tweaked the runes because I still have the ones for the visceral attacks. Instead, I have physical damage reduction and all damage reduction. I wondered about equipping guidance to boost the rally potential, but I think it will just make me want to attack her instead of heal. And it's risky. Are you weak to fire? And I didn't try it all this time. I was about to dodge at the right time. Not again, dude. I was at the exact same spot 40 attempts ago. 40. I doubled the attempt to get to the same spot. Fucking unbelievable. What?
You gotta be fucking kidding me. You are fucking kidding me, dude. What's up everyone, it's your boy again. I'm tuning in just to let you guys know that in my head canon, this is the attempt that I defeated Maria. And while I talk about it, I'm gonna play some extra scenes from some other attempts that I died that I feel are worth watching while I talk. This was a fight that went on for way too many hours and it became more and more frustrating. As you saw on my 46th attempt, I decided to change my strategy and it was incredibly strong and I nearly killed her back then. But then push forward a couple of hours, double the amount of attempts, and I don't drop her health down to zero by one attack, and I'm screwed again. From here on, I was just stuck on the loop of dying over and over to the same attacks, hoping for the lucky attempt that I would manage to reach the end and win. This while getting more and more frustrated by the fact that I felt I should have already killed her long ago. Looking back, there's a lot of things that I feel I gotta change. The main thing that I did wrong on this fight though, was that I did not take any breaks. After each hour that I play, I take a 15 minute break so that I come back with a fresh mind. I didn't do it this time around because I was afraid of breaking the flow of the fight and as you saw, it worked incredibly against me. But I don't mean just a break after each hour, I also mean I should take a break after each attempt. She fucking parried me. I should pause and reflect quickly about how I died and what should I change to avoid it again. This is something not just related to Maria but to all the previous bosses. I always start really strong because I'm still very defensive, I'm still learning the attack patterns of the boss. But then once I start getting used to them, I start getting overconfident. And if there is an attack that one shots me that I frequently dodge wrong, I will frequently dodge it wrong because I don't give myself the time to actually reflect and think. And this was the biggest mistake that happened with Maria and Ludwig and Yarnam Queen and so many other bosses, is that there were attacks that would one shot me, I would die and think to myself, okay, I gotta do that differently. But then I would just immediately get back into the fight over and over again. And I couldn't get inside my head the habit of recognizing that attack earlier or taking any other different action because I got the habit already. It's incredibly frustrating to start off a fight so strong and then double, triple, quadruple the attempts until I finally managed to beat the boss. And we got Orphan of course coming up and I don't intend on dying 300 times to him. So bear with me while I learn and improve my skill. I hope you appreciate this recording and enjoy the rest of the episode. <laughs> I'm gonna go mad with this game, okay? I am gonna lose my shit. <sighs> like, this is the type of shit that makes me wonder if I really wanna keep going with the blood level 4 run. But I'm so close to the end, I have 4 bosses left. But one of the bosses is one of the toughest bosses in the game. I don't know how Orphan of Cause is gonna play out. I really don't. That fucker is fast for a newborn. Let me tell you that much. This opening animation is insane, dude. Let me just take a peek at the wonders. <laughs> uh, and also, by the way, um, Maria said that she was dead. She was a corpse. Yet she was still alive. So does that mean that she was buried here inside this grave? And, like, it's something that really confuses me. So. Did she die in the nightmare, but yet she kept manifesting her mind or whatever? Or it, does this place exist somewhere in real life? She died there. I, it's... I gotta... I gotta look up the lore again, dude. I really don't know why is she buried here and still alive. Like, I understand the whole nightmare thing of being able to transcend the physical body, but did her physical body die here or in the real world? My question. 
But yeah. All right, everyone. That's it for this episode. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'll catch you guys on the next one. Take care.